lovelies and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amity Gilmore and this is my life. A couple of weeks ago I did a Q&A while in hospital because I was bored out of my brains and I also needed to film a video. I am in the hospital and I'm going to be doing a Q&A. You guys came in with a lot of questions, so much so that I had to split this video in two. Part one was answering the questions I got on Instagram. This is part two, so these are the questions I actually got on YouTube. If you want to watch part one, I will link it up here and you can watch that before we get to this video. But if you've already watched that video, let's get into the video. Make things right, I hold you and wipe your tears. How are you? I'm great. I, I'm actually really good. Like, I'm doing so much better than what I was two weeks ago. I am having a bit of trouble with nausea but that is all good. We're getting that sorted and I'm having a bit of issues with my vision but I think that's medication related but other than that I'm doing great. How's your crafting doing? My crafting is doing great. I have scrunchies and tubey clips on my Etsy. I do have my Etsy linked down below if you want to go have a look at those, but no pressure. I have been making candles for a couple of my friends who want to buy candles off me, so I've been doing that. So crafting is just something that I've really been enjoying recently just to give me something to do. <laughs> What's your favorite song at the moment? If I was to choose one, it would probably be Unity by For King and Country off their new album What Are We Waiting For? I love For King and Country so much. They are like my favorite. If you could live anywhere other than Australia, where would you live? I would probably live in America and I know that's for some people that's like, oh, you know, everyone wants to live in America, that's such a boring question, but I think I'd want to live in America because there's a lot of opportunity, like, in America. I don't know. I feel like America would be a really cool place to live because there's a lot more there than here in Australia, and there's a lot more, I don't know, there's just a lot more, especially for music, there's a lot more opportunity over there than there is here, and I don't know, I think America. You talked about moving to Sydney maybe. Are you scared to live in Sydney away from your family or are you excited? I was thinking about moving to Sydney. I'm not too sure anymore because I was excited and then my health kind of got really bad. Um, and I realized that I have a lot of support locally that I wouldn't be able to have in Sydney. I have support in Sydney, but I don't have enough like friendship support which I could make in Sydney but it's just it's a very different environment to where I grew up and I think with where my life is at the moment I'm not too sure if I will move to Sydney but it's something that I'm definitely keen to consider one day. I'm taking my driver's test this month at the end of the month any advice on it I know you drive Oh my goodness, congratulations, that is so exciting. I remember the first time I got my license, it was just the most exciting thing ever. Uh, I would say, I don't know how uh, driving works in your country, but I know in my country um, we do like our L's test, which is like a, a questionnaire, and then we have our L's, but when we have our L's, like our learners, we can't drive without someone in the front seat with us. Like someone has to be, a full licensed person has to be in the front seat with us while we drive. Then like we do that for a year and then we've got, and we've got to log in our hours and we've got to get a certain amount of hours. Some of those day hours, some of those night hours. And then we get our P's, which basically we can drive on our own and we just can't go a certain amount above the speed limit until we get our full license. But we, there's two types of P's in Australia, there's red P's and green P's, so I am on my full license now. The best advice that I ever got given when learning to drive is drive like nobody knows what they're doing. Drive like nobody around you knows how to drive because when you are aware that people around you may not necessarily know how to drive that well, even though they do drive, then you are a lot more cautious 
and you are a lot more careful and you know that just like you, other people make mistakes and just be on the lookout and be aware and don't be distracted but just be aware that people just, just be aware of the people around you while driving. I find that that was the best advice that I ever got in terms of driving. How many eggs do your chooks in your backyard crank out each day? At the moment, they're not laying too much because they had lice, which was not fun. We had to like wash them in a tea tree bath and then we had to basically like clean the entire pen. When they're doing well we get two eggs a day we've got two chooks so that's one egg per a chook each day so they crank out one a day each basically and when they're going through a rough patch when they have lice or when it's cold like really cold and wet they tend not to lay but if all is well they lay one egg a day each how are you handling your ng tube feed this is a really good question, so I am handling them really well. Um, there was a time a couple weeks ago where I wasn't able to tolerate anything orally and anything through my tube as well, so I did actually stop tube feeding for a while. It wasn't fun, um, but that's like the only time, I think that's the only time I've ever had where I couldn't tolerate my feeds for more than a day so i'm actually doing pretty well it's like drip feeds so it's very slow it's like drips like the tiniest bit in every now and then so it it's really small proportions so it's 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 totally fine like i'm i'm doing really well you had mentioned about you may need to get a gj tube how do you feel about that? So they were thinking about doing like a peg tube or a peg J, or a peg as they call it, but we have decided that we're gonna trial a Botox um, injection into the pylorus first, because if we can try as many minimal invasive options before we go to more invasive options, that would be good because when you have a peg, I mean like it can be reversed but it's quite invasive so if we can try other things first then that's the best thing to do. Has having the tube feedings decreased your pain at all? Okay so my pain, it has decreased my pain yes and no. So if I was tube fed only like nil by mouth I'm pretty sure it would, would completely destroy my, not destroy my pain but like I wouldn't have pain but because I do take things orally still I still get pain and most of the time I only get pain when I have solids which I'm not even supposed to be having solids anyway but I'll have solids and solids will give me like so much pain and that is why I don't well I'm not supposed to have solids but I still do because I love food <laughs> and I really really need to understand that Fru doesn't love me. It's like it's a one-sided relationship. Like, it's, it's not working. <laughs> when did you start getting interested in making music? I started being interested in music when I think I was about 10. I started taking it more seriously. I grew up doing a lot of the Steadfits and talent shows and a lot of performances like all over the place. I have always loved singing from a very young age. And it's always been something that I've enjoyed and really wanted to do, even if it's just as a small hobby. I used to get asked as a kid and a teenager to sing at a whole bunch of different events and different things. And I just love singing, so getting into music was probably something that at one stage I really wanted a career in music, but when you live in Australia, it's not really that... Um, like it does happen people do get into music as a career in Australia but it's like very hard and almost impossible so <laughs> so even just as a hobby it's like that's good enough for me which music artists have influenced you the most so I talk about these guys all the time but for King and Country is hands down my favorite 
uh, band and I love the way that they don't shy away from like hard topics and they like to talk about or well, talk they like to sing about things that are very uh, challenging and you know they're not afraid to sing about things like addiction or sing about like things like uh, mental health or or they don't shy away from like the big topics and they actually sing from their heart about things and I really love that. I love how they're honest and their music is very powerful and I really love that. So they are definitely two artists or one band, two people that I really, really enjoy listening to. That was my video for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you liked it even more, don't forget to click that subscribe button. You can also follow me over my Instagram at Amri Gilmore. Love you guys. God bless.